Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about how we can write Python code that uses GPUs or graphics processing units. We aren't going to be using it for graphics, but for basically scientific computing or kind of machine learning. And, and, and I think at least right now, the easiest way to be doing that is with this package called PyTorch. Um, there are other tools out there like TensorFlow that have been around longer, and I'm sure there's going to be other tools after PyTorch. But at least for now, PyTorch is kind of the easiest way to do this in Python. And um, PyTorch is a lot like NumPy, right? Where I have um, matrices that we're going to be calling tensors. Um, and, uh, and so it's going to feel very familiar. You do a lot of the same things. You can kind of slice them the same way, uh, multiply them. Um, but there's going to be a few differences. One is that it's going to be really easy to move your matrices to a GPU, do computations there, and then maybe move it back to your CPU. Um, it's going to be very easy to compute gradients. And for those of you who have taken calculus, which I'm not assuming, um, a gradient is just a derivative evaluated at a specific point. And, um, and in calculus, often we're trying to maximize or minimize something. I mean, that's optimization. And the way we might do that is while well, we set the derivative to zero and then figure out where that maximum or minimum is. In general, derivatives and gradients are important uh, for various optimization techniques. And, uh, and the things we're going to be uh, trying to optimize here are machine learning models, right? Can I find the best coefficient so that, um, you know, let's say my linear model has the best performance. And by best performance, I mean the minimum error. Um, those are the two things I want to talk about this semester. Um, third, uh, PyTorch makes it actually very quite simple to build deep learning neural network uh, models. And, uh, and they have good tutorials on that. I'm not going to get that deep in this course, but uh, just know that it's out there. Um, so why do we want to use GPUs for machine learning instead of uh, CPUs? And, uh, and the answer is, well, we get more performance uh, per dollar. And uh, it's kind of hard, right? When you're comparing different pieces of hardware to compare and say, well, what's faster or what is better? Um, so let me just talk about some of the stats that you might see when you're comparing hardware. Um, one of the stats you might see is, is cores. Um, and cores tells us, well, how many things can we really be doing um, at once, right? And so, so here what I'm, I'm doing is I actually borrowed an example from this book over here, book by Sebastian Roshka, a uh, machine learning professor in the statistics department here at UW-Madison. Um, and he wrote this machine learning book. And uh, in the book, they're comparing um, uh, an example of a CPU, um, an Intel Core i7 to, um, to an NVIDIA GPU. And, um, and so in this case, we can see that the CPU has only eight cores and the GPU has something like 3,000. So right there, I'm like, wow, the GPU can do many more things at once. But that's not the end of the story because maybe those eight, uh, eight, eight cores are faster than these many GPU cores. And, and, that, and that's actually the case here. And, and so if I'm trying to look at this, uh, I might look at, well, um, you know, how fast are these ticking, right? I mean, I have some sort of base clock and and kind of the, the cores are in sync to that. And I can see, well, um, the CPU cores are, are faster in terms of that, that base clock. Um, you know, not a lot faster, but, you know, you know a little over two, two times faster. Okay, so you might think, well, I can multiply the speed by the cores, but still that's not the end of the story uh, because it turns out that even if you're kind of, um, you know, doing operations on these clock ticks, some operations might take multiple clock ticks, right? So I can't really say, oh, I can't just look at this number and then say, well, this is faster, right? Because maybe, um, maybe, maybe the GPU does more operations per clock tick than, uh, than the CPU does. So with all this complexity, what it really boils down to is, you know, <laughs> I, I have to run my program on, on these bo both platforms and really kind of measure how fast that is. Right, and and really, you could do that to, with any program. Kind of take any program and run it on different hardware and measure how long it takes. And uh, and when we have a program that we're using to basically evaluate the speed of some hardware, uh, that program is called a benchmark. So you could take any program and turn it into a benchmark. And um, and and so one kind of popular benchmark really tries to exercise floating point operations, right? Not integers, but floating point operations. Is really that's the the basis for you know most scientific computing and, and machine learning, and uh, and so what people did is they ran the same programs on both of these, and and so these are really the numbers we care about. Um, how many floating operation points, floating point operations can I do per second 
And there's a G in front of here, and, and that stands for, for giga. So, so really, like, how many billions of floating point operations can I do um, per second? And, and so at this point, I'm really kind of comparing 409 versus 11,300. Uh, and that will tell me what's faster. Now, if I'm actually trying to buy hardware, um, I care about two things. I care about, well, what is that performance? And, uh, and, and what is the cost, right? I mean, if the GPU is way more expensive, then maybe it's not worth it, right? Because I mean, I could certainly buy multiple CPUs, right? Uh, but in this case, I see that uh, the GPU definitely wins here. It's 30% uh, it's cheaper and about 28 times faster, not at everything, but at these floating point operations, right? So this would be um, really, we'd be getting a lot more performance for our money if we use GPUs in this situation. So, so back to Tensor, or sorry, back to PyTorch, let's talk about how we're actually gonna use um, a GPU. And, uh, and, and PyTorch is pretty general, right? You can use, um, run very similar code on either a, a CPU or a GPU. So I'm just gonna start in the CPU world, which is basically everything we've ever done um, this semester. And uh, for my example operation, I'm just trying to think about multiplying two matrices together. And I'm going to make these very large matrices. So well, let, let me put some sizes in here. Um, I, I think that, well, let, let's look at this. So I have rows and, uh, and columns like this. I have rows and columns down here too for both of these. And, uh, and if I want to be able to multiply um, A by B using the dot product, um, I, I know that this number of columns here has to match up with this number of rows. So, so maybe I'm just going to put this in a variable, something like this. And I don't know, I'll say like n is, is 5 for now. And I'll say this is 2,000, so I have 2,000 rows and 5 columns. And then 5 rows and I don't know, I'll say, um, here let me, I, I just need to make sure this actually lines up for my other example. I'll say like 3,000 here, and then I'll say 4,000 here. So I could do that, and, and, and I'm just trying to randomly fill those with numbers. And, um, and if I wanted to, I could say something like this, c equals a dot product b. And, uh, and that's pretty fast. Let, let me make this much larger now so I can actually see it drawing slow. Um, I want it to go slow so that you can uh, see the benefits of going over to the GPU. When I run that, uh, it's generating those things and uh, with all these random numbers and, uh, and taking longer than it did when I was um, prepping this before. And, uh, and, and you know what, I just had an error that my error message that my um, kernel appeared to die, and, and that's on my other screen, which you can't see. Let, let me just try running all this all again and see um, see if it works now. Do a kernel restart and run all. Maybe I just got unlucky there. I'm going to run this, and uh, see how it goes this time. Great. And, and so maybe it's just because I had kind of run too many examples in this notebook before I started. And so when I kind of restarted it, dropped all that memory, and then I was able to run it. Great, so I have that. And let's just see what the size of C is. And uh, and you should know what the size of C is because there's a rule, right? Um, I'm taking this first um, entry from, from my first matrix, my last entry from my last matrix. And I could do that even if I multiply a bunch of different matrices together, right? So it should be 3,000 by 4,000, um, and it is. Okay, so I want to think about how long it takes to do this operation. And so I'm going to time it. I'm going to say t0 equals time dot time. And down here I'm going to say t1 equals time dot time. No, nothing with PyTorch yet. I'm just trying to uh, see how long everything takes in, in NumPy. Um, and so I'm going to say down here, well, t1 minus t0. And, uh, and that takes about one and a half seconds. Okay, so let's move everything over to PyTorch now and, uh, and do the same experiment there. So you can see I've already imported Torch up here, just like so. And, uh, and, and converting from NumPy to, um, to PyTorch is actually pretty simple. I'm going to say torch.from NumPy, and I can do that to A. And, uh, and that's trying to convert it. Maybe I'll just save that in a variable like so. And then I'm going to do the same thing. B is going to be from NumPy of B. I'm going to do that, and I have both of those now. And, uh, and if I look at, say, like the type of, of A, I can see that instead of being a NumPy array, you now it's this torch, torch tensor. So let me multiply these again, and I, and I can do the same multiplication as before, right? If I want to just do the dot product down here, you do this. Uh, you can see it works just like it does in NumPy. It should be very familiar to you. 
And uh, and like before, I'm going to time it and, and see if it's any faster or slower. All right, so I'm going to grab that little piece down there. How many seconds does this take? Uh, let's find out. And uh, and you can see it's very similar to before. I mean, I guess marginally faster. Maybe that's just noise, right? And, uh, and the reason it's not much faster is because, well, if I look at one of these things, I have this new option now, uh, which is device. I have that attribute for every tensor, and it tells me where that, um, that tensor lives. This tensor currently lives on my CPU, and so when I do this uh, operation, well, I'm, I'm doing all those floating point operations on my CPU, and so it's not a surprise it's um, about the speed it is with NumPy, right? Because NumPy is also operating on, on the CPU. Now, um, if I want to, I can move these things around. And so I could say something like, um, you know, A2 equals uh, A.2 CPU. I'm kind of imagining that A was somewhere else, like my GPU, right? So I could do this and I could say A2 dot, uh, dot device. And I see, well, okay, that's my CPU now. Um, what I'd really like to do is uh, move it to uh, my GPU instead, right? So if I do something like this, so I say A equals A, dot two um, I want to move it to my GPU um, but actually uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say CUDA because CUDA is basically this GPU programming API that uh, NVIDIA developed right so I'm going to try to do that and uh, and maybe let me try to grab the other one too and I, I really like them both to go over there I'm going to do that I'm going to get an error because let's take a peek at it Right, so well for one, there's no NVIDIA driver. Uh, I need to have an NVIDIA GPU, and uh, and so even if you have a GPU, that doesn't necessarily mean that it has um, uh, CUDA support. Right, CUDA support is what really lets us do this kind of scientific computing or machine machine learning. Right, so so I'm not able to do that here. Um, in the next video, I'm actually actually move it over. And, and so one thing people will do is um, they'll say this. They'll say torch.cuda is available like this, and um, and uh, actually it's CUDA dot is available and, and that's false, right? If, if I had a GPU that was kind of capable and installed properly, I'd be able to. So one of the things people often do is they'll write code like this. They'll say, um, you know, if it's available, move it there because it's trying to be faster. And, and so that's not available and so it does nothing. And, uh, and and so this is good because, well, I can write all my code the same way afterwards. And if there's a GPU there, well, my code will run faster. If the GPU is not there, uh, no big deal. It'll, it'll run a little slow, but, but at least it'll kind of run fine. Okay, so in the next video, we'll actually look at how we can, uh, uh, some ways we can run on, on a GPU.